Okay, we're back and we're at the machine and I'm going to start to do some free motion thread painting uh, on our pansy. I want to show you something real fast. I have in my top needle a very heavy size 12 pearl cotton hand dyed embroidery thread. It's DMC. It's got a bit of a sheen. What I'm holding in my hand is not the color I'm using, but it's the exact same thread. Quick reminder, if you're using a finicky thread, go ahead and dribble a few rows of Sewer's Aid. Sewer's Aid. It's liquid silicone. It helps thread flow through your machine parts more easily. And then just with your finger go like that and you are ready to go. You don't have to do this. I just plain do it because I'm busy. I don't have that much time with my machine and so I want things to work well the first time. Now I'm using a very heavy thread here because I want to add a different type of texture to the center of this pansy. Also, by using a heavy thread, I'm going to be able to sew this area very quickly. Now you can see that I have switched threads. I'm now using a reddish purple rayon thread and my goal is to secure all the edges of the appliques and also to do some thread painting so that I can add some neat highlights to this flower. There are actually three separate pieces of purple fabric that make up the center of this flower and my goal here is to stitch all the way around the edges of all three pieces to secure the edges but also to decorate my pansy. I could have just as easily done a satin stitch or some kind of decorative stitch but try this thread painting. It's really fun and you can't mess it up. I mean it. It's a blast! Once I finish decorating the purple center, I move to the outer perimeter of the flower. I'm using a salmony rose thread to decorate and secure the edges. Again, you could do satin stitch or anything, but it's more fun to put this roughly edge in. Okay, so now I have completely outlined the entire flower. I'm probably going to go back in later on and do some additional thread painting to add some highlights, but what I want to show you now is how this trapunto works. So when you get this far, unpin the extra batting and flip it over. And this is where you're going to start to see the magic of trapunto. We're going to cut away all the excess batting. I use child scissors for this. They're blunt tipped and I'm probably diluting myself but I use them because I feel as if I am less likely to cut into the fabric if I use them. And the reason why I think this is true is because of the blunt tip, there's no sharp point that I can get in real deep and maybe do some damage. Now that's not to say that you might not cut into your fabric. You still might and you want to be really careful. Um, to be honest, this is making me nervous talking to you while I'm doing this, so I'm going to finish this off camera and show you the end piece. So here is my trapuntoed piece all cut out. Notice that I have not gone exactly to the edge. There's places where there's a little bit, don't worry about it, don't stress out, don't risk cutting this background fabric. Um, what I'm going to show you when we go to quilt this, it's, it's going to make it all puff out real well. The other thing I want to show you, and it's not really well demonstrated here because I didn't pull my thread tails through to the back, but if you pull your thread tails through to the back and tie a knot, you don't have to bury it anywhere. You can leave long thread tails hanging off. It doesn't matter. Nobody's ever going to see the back side to this. So what you care about is that your work is secure, not that it's neat on this side. I'm still just dealing with my quilt top and now I'm securing the edges of my leaves. I'm using a plain old satin stitch. Boring! But I wanted to show you you could do it. Now remember, this area is not trapuntoed and because the satin stitch partially goes outside the area of fusible web, I needed to use a temporary stabilizer. When I'm done securing those edges, I tear away that stabilizer and now I'm ready for free motion embroidery on top of the leaves. Again, because it's stabilized by the fusible web, I don't need stabilizer now.
Now I've spray basted my top into the final quilt sandwich and switched to monofilament or invisible thread in my top needle. I'm stitching around the perimeter of all my different applique shapes and this will make my trapano really pop out. Always begin in the center of your quilt. In this case I began at the yellow center where I'd done all the thread painting, then moved to the purple and eventually all around all the flower's petals and then finally to the leaves. Now could you go back in now that it's in a quilt sandwich and do even more thread painting? <laughs> you bet you could and you'd create more depths and more textures doing it this way. That's the wonder and the fun of a technique like this. You are driving the quilt. I've again switched to a size 12 pearl cotton hand dyed embroidery thread and now I'm stitching some artsy fartsy large leaf shapes on one side of the flower. These appliqued leaves look kind of ho-hum to me, so I'm throwing some inlining inside the vein lines with metallic thread. Hopefully this will jazz them up a bit. These still shots show you just how much texture you can add to your appliqued quilts just by virtue of this trapunto. Remember, we haven't done any quilting yet outside the appliqued with the exception of those artsy fartsy leaves. Remember this when you're deciding whether to add trapunto. It adds incredible depth and beauty to your quilts. All that's left now is to quilt the background area. You know there's many, many designs that would work really well here, but this one I chose because it's really fun to quilt, and I just felt like it. If this video tutorial has been fun or inspirational for you, please let us know and maybe we'll come up with some more down the road. Take care.